So Jay, you're the man behind uh, a technology that I've got to say is one of the most interesting things I've seen for a year. I mean, it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about autocode, and for those people watching that don't know what that is, could you just explain it to them? Yeah, Jason. So autocode is what we believe is the next generation of software engineering and software development. Traditionally, we used to sit and write code, right? So what we are trying to do through autocode is make that entire coding process automated to a large extent, right? So what if you can go and draw something on the board, take a picture, and generate the code behind it? That's what autocode is all about. What if you can write natural English and the Java code is generated for you? That is what is autocode. What if you can use machine learning to identify bugs in a dynamic manner? That's autocoding. The underlying technology behind autocoding, autocode is a deep learning and image analytics. So basically what somebody does is when you go and draw something on the board, you take a picture, the underlying algorithms identify what the picture is all about, decompose the picture into hundreds of pieces, puts it back together, applies the algorithms behind it, and tells you what, it identifies what that bits and pieces are, and then it generates a code for you. But for the, for the user, the experience is no more complicated than grabbing a Sharpie, drawing a, you know, yeah. a picture that represents you, yeah. which for me would probably be very bad, uh, and then uh, an about section, some drop down menus, a bit of a, a, a few nav navigable buttons and so on and so forth, some text. Mm -hmm. um, and then you take a picture of it, right. and 30 seconds later, mm -hmm. what you end up with is, is, is code, is HTML. What, what, can you yeah. fill in that a little it bit more? It is first? HTML5, <laughs> bootstrap HTML. So the entire HTML code is generated, and it gives you the basic wireframe in working. All the drop-down buttons, the, uh, you know, the check boxes, the radio buttons, the, uh, the text, free text, all those things are made available to you. All you need to do is bring in your design elements, which, are, which could be your corporate design elements, et cetera, where you, know, you have rapid prototyping, right? So it, this essentially accelerates rapid prototyping. Okay, and the important thing to, to point to make though, and I've, I've uh, got into trouble before because I've talked about aut automated coding and yeah. upset people about it. Uh, so, so it's important to make clear, this doesn't get rid of the coder. What this does is it gets some of the more rudimentary as uh, elements yeah. of that process yeah. and makes them quicker because I saw the first thing you did was you went into the code when we we were playing around with an example earlier and you started to adjust it and add elements and finesse mm -hmm. this and change this and, and so on yeah it makes the coder productive much more because coder doesn't need to spend time on the syntaxes the errors you know which can creep in when you're looking at the code this gives you the basic version at least 70 percent of the code ready-made right so the, the the developer can spend more time on the finer aspects they can spend time on fixing the, uh, you know, the more value-added activities. So it reduces the amount of time taken to go from a concept to an actual working prototype. It also frees up the coder's time to focus more on higher value-added aspects rather than just worry about the syntax and other things. Absolutely fascinating. And what other areas does that sort of technology immediately suggest to you other than and websites? So websites is one thing which we, which we have seen the demo. The other thing which we have is also going from natural language to code, right? So we are working, we actually have a full-fledged working model where you write your queries or you write your commands in simple English and the Java code is generated for you. So that means that the user or the developer again, uh, he's trying to build a certain part of a Java code, he just writes in simple English and the corresponding code is made available to you, full Java text, right? So the user just needs to look at it and cut paste it as and when needed. So again, uh, you know, compared to HTML5, Java is much more complex in terms of syntax and other things. They can learn uh, immediately, right? So they don't need to spend again time on the basics, element, basics of coding, but focus more on the uh, more high level co concepts in terms of how do we optimize the code, reduce the number of lines if needed and those things, right? The third element which we are also working on is on fixing uh, code issues, vul vulnerabilities. All these areas involve using extensive amount of machine learning, deep learning, image analytics, for example, where we, we have trained the engine to look for various patterns of uh, you know, security vulnerabilities, for example. And it identifies certain patterns, it will alert the developer as to where exactly you need to go and fix the problem, rather than going through million lines of code, it'll tell you these are the five places there are problems. Again, improving the productivity and reducing the time to go to market. Amazing.
absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason.